So, welcome back boys. If you guys haven't seen in the last episode, we actually had this beast running by itself, idling, under its own power. Here's the clip. And if you don't find that sexual, then you're probably like super normal because engines don't really turn everybody on. It's probably only like a select few of us, so you should probably go to like Pornhub or something. Anyways, we have to address our haggard ass wiring and that's why we have some wiring loom and uh, some random Amazon fuse box. So let's see what we can make happen today. Done, that's it. We're just running it like that, sketchy ass. Hashtag sketchy ass. I can see it now. A million hits right there. Now obviously this isn't gonna cut it because that's all our power wires that should be fused and relayed in. <laughs> Um, including our uh, OBD2 sensor. So what we have here is this fuse box and relay holder. Um, so it has slots for eight fuses and six relays. So potentially we could run um, our fan controls through here um, and then all of our computer stuff. That, Anyways, I'm half handicapped so the best spot to look at stuff for wiring is going to be lt1swap.com and that's what I've been using on my laptop and it's a good guide on how to do things. Um, I don't recommend it doing my way because frankly I'm just half retarded all the time. So lt1swap.com, um, I'm probably not going to leave the link below because it's just lt1swap.com. Okay, stupid. I'm probably going to start on this side and start attaching some loom on all these smaller wires and see like if I can tidy it up and see what I can bunch together and uh, then lead me to the other side. This is cray cray. This is where we at so far. Uh, we have this loom then the one that goes along the back and shit. Now, um, this is probably gonna end up biting me in the ass, but we're just trying to have a budget baloney pony. And the name is a uh, courtesy of Ryan. I don't know your last name and I don't want to look it up right now. So Ryan, yes, you named the car the baloney pony, AKA riding the baloney pony, get it? It's like a penis. Um, and pony's also a Mustang, so it kind of makes sense, right? Um, but yeah, this is our haggard ass wiring so far. Sketchy counts, sketchy counts. Well, I got super annoyed and I mounted the turbo just for fun because it looks cool. Um, but I really hate this harness. I obviously didn't go the route that it was supposed to go. So I believe it's supposed to like, the computer's supposed to sit here and some of the wires actually come up over the manifold. I tried to run everything in the back, but it's all haggard to shit and I really hate it. I just hate how many splices there are in it and stuff that was supposed to be in the harness that wasn't there and I had to reattach some plugs. It's just, is it worth the headache? Or do we wait and get a cheap standalone ECU or something or even a standalone harness pre-built by someone who knows what they're doing? Hmm, decisions. The next predicament that I think I wanna tackle is, um, we don't have any loom big enough for this, so I'm gonna have to get some bigger loom. However, um, the ECU, we have to put it somewhere. Right here is where the battery would go, and it would fit there, um, probably really sloppily, but I think I'm gonna pull this fender off and see if there's somewhere inside of here that we can mount this and run the harness down through here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull this fender off. So you have to ignore the heater for a second. And yes, if you guys do forgot, did did forget, we do have sexy strange suspension in this thing. So it's a strange single adjustable coilovers in the front and then strange double adjustable shocks in the back. And this is like drag spec stuff. So, I mean, the car is gonna hook when we want it to hook. But I was thinking maybe here where this um, 
cruise control module is in this area maybe if we can get it to fit so we're gonna pull this off and see if we can uh, replace this stupid thing Ta -da! Ken would be proud this shit weighs like three pounds I was just gonna chuck it, but then there's stuff over there and I didn't want to wreck it. Look. Fuck that thing. So to be completely honest, I'm not even sure how I'd mount this thing. Cause the original snapped into a case somewhere, I think. So, I guess we could probably drill these little fins out. That might hit where the wheel goes though. Uh oh. Uh oh, skittios! I didn't think the CC was so damn big. It's so big, like my dick. Yeah, cock's too big. <laughs> Just kidding, it's tiny. <laughs> Fuckboy gang. Do we need windshield wash? Oh my god, that would fit up there, I think. Right here. It would totally fit up here. But windshield wash would be super nice to have still, I think, in a street car. Which is really unfortunate because that's a really good spot. Sadly, I'm going to need the fender again, I think. There's a ton of room in here! I gotta get my specialty flashlight out. So up back in here, like, this thing should fit, like, right there. Of course, I'm gonna have to waterproof it pretty good, I guess. Yeah, and I think the splash guard just follows this line right here anyways, and goes into here. So I think we should be fine if we put it in here. We can put it up high, I guess. Right there. Okay, let's see if we can get the let's see if we can get the harnesses through here just to check and see if they'll fit on there. Uh, I've got to extend the legs with a tripod so you guys can see. Oh, this stuff is the stuff that has to take care of the fuse box, so we want the rest of it. What if we go underneath this right here? These old brittle clips, man. Man. Ah, oh, wires everywhere. So I think this will work out fine because uh, our loom kind of runs here and that kind of is where it wants to be, really. It kind of looks super ugly, but far away it still looks ugly. So, um, and it's going to go underneath this brake cylinder and down into here. And then it's going to come through here and it just hangs a bit, but it'll plug in right where the ECU is gonna go up here. The good thing is, is that this is gonna be our fuse box thing, and this thing should be able to mount somewhere here to keep it all neat and tidy. Like voila. Doesn't that work out perfect? Well, we can get rid of these stupid fucking things too. Cut all these dumb wires. Also, I'm too lazy to track it back to the ECU, so if anybody wants to tell me what this gray and yellow wire is for, maybe it's coolant temp sensor, I don't know. Someone let me know. And then I think this one's intake air temperature. However, it's just two wires because there was a MAF sensor on this and intake air was built into the MAF sensor, so we have to put a different one on. Boo! The stupid thing is, for the amount of time that I put into this wiring already, it doesn't make sense to, other than getting YouTube content because I could have just bought a wiring harness and worked a day of overtime and it would have like equaled out or did all this, not worked a day of overtime, got YouTube videos and uh, have a haggard ass harness. That's life for you. And in case y'all forgot, there's your golden fuck boys. So I'm just contemplating like 
these accessories would work. Like if I put this pipe out the fender here, or even modified this just to go up a bit first and then curve down and then out here somewhere. It has to go out the side anyways. It, there's no room to get down back to the back half of the car. But like these accessories will work. I just need to somehow get a better thing for this, this piece, and then this thermostat piece also, instead of pointing this way, I just need it to point down. And if it pointed down, I have tons of room for to get it to a radiator. I mean, this would be the budget way to do it because I have everything already and I won't need anything else. I'd literally just have to put a belt on this setup and then throw a radiator in it, turbo oil feed and return, and then this thing could run on its own. Well, some fuel lines too. I got some decisions to make, boys. See, like there's tons of room here between this and this. And then just go with the fender. That'd be cool. And then, like, I just need a belt to run these accessories. And then we have basically here over to put a big, like, triple core radiator in here. And this much room to run fans. So, I think that part will work. I, I know I got super distracted and, like, away from the task at hand. I just started looking up, like, oil feed and return line kits that I could get for cheap on Amazon. And that's where I, it kind of led me to, but shit, shit, ah! Oh yeah, my haircut's all like weird. Also with a bit of bendy bendy and maybe some like heat shielding, the power steering actually fits pretty well with our headers there. There's actually like a, an adapter for this power steering to actually go to the rack, which is kind of cool. And I don't have to build one because I think it needs to be like a two thirds of the pressure of this pump. So it'd be cool to have power steering in a street car too. I'm punching my ass. So the plan here is to attach this little bracket to um, these. And I'm really hoping that there's nothing between this. It's just like a heat sink kind of. So we're gonna drill a hole in this. I'm gonna make it bigger. And then we gotta drill a hole in this and attach this to here and then this to the car. Easy peasy. This is why I don't mount my vise. Cause I can just move it wherever I want. Like a baller. Like meow. Here's our hole in the body here. I just have to figure out how to get a nut in there. So. Probably gonna have to add a second bracket in the bottom. Tons of room. Look at it up there. It actually works out pretty good. Let's see if these harnesses also reach though. Cause that's a big factor as well. I don't know which one goes where or which direction. So this is our harness fits in there too. And that's gonna tuck away up where this harness is, right here. And then it should go be out of the way. I just have to loom this up, really. So that's good. And we're gonna have to put another bracket in the bottom here because it's kind of loosey-goosey. It's not too bad, actually. Should put another bracket there anyways, though. But now that that's done and out of the way, look how much cleaner the wiring looks in the entire car now. Ignore the big stainless lines. All these haggard ass, like, this is like fuel line ground and shit. Um, these are ground for the engine that can go on the back. So ignore this one, and this one, and this one. <laughs> and then it looks a lot better. And it just kind of tucks down underneath this thing. 
So we're going to have to put these in a fuse box, these in the fuse box, um, some of these pink ones as well. And then some of these other ones, I have no idea what they do, like this yellow. I'll have to refigure that out again. Just the little things that take the longest time. So essentially your relay is going to be um, to turn on something that uses a high amount of amperage without like sending the signal with a high amperage wire. So what we're gonna have to do is probably use a couple of relays and um, a bunch of fuses. So we're gonna join up a couple of our pink wires into each fuse. So probably three, three, three pink wires go into each fuse. And then the relay is gonna feed the fuse and then you gotta feed the relay with a signal and then good times. So it's a lot of wiring bullshit. And I could have saved a lot of time by just buying one online realistically and then you hook up one wire and that's it. But I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm just gonna tinker with it. Um, I do understand the basics of wiring and shit. So, um, yeah, this looks kind of cheapy too. Okay, I'm gonna do one, jam it in there and then we'll see kind of what we're doing here. So you see all our pink wires here. Each one of these needs its own power. So we join up three pink wires here. We're gonna crimp a pin on it. It'll go into one side of the fuse box here. And then we'll join three more. It'll go in the next fuse. So on and so forth. Now these things aren't the best of quality, just the way they work. Like, uh, and you're not supposed to join two into one, I don't think anyways. But even like this part of the thing, it's usually got like cuts in it to make it fold over better and grab. So I don't trust it that much. So I think I'm gonna put a dab of solder on each one of them anyways, just to hold them in place also. It's probably a good idea. Well, our soldering thing needs a little bit of time to heat up here. It's gonna take a time to appreciate the two different ends of the spectrum we have here. We have Shipbox Turbo LS Choo Choo Mustang. Like I don't even care what happens to it. We could put this out on the road, do one burnout and it blows up and it'll still be the funnest thing in the world. And then we have Choo Choo Japanese race car, fuckboy status car, where everything on this is baller as shit. And uh, I eat ass. But I just, uh, I need time to appreciate it. The sad thing is that it's like literally the beginning of winter here, as you can see outside. So like we have to wait until spring to make even passes on this thing. Like there's no, no fuel in it. The fuel has been drained out of it and the ethanol has been pickled out of the system. So I can't even start this thing. It's just kind of sitting here until the spring, which means we have a lot of time to get this LS done, which is why I've been hammering out on it. And if we take off these wires right here, I don't want to lose all these spacers that I, my custom spacers and bolt for my ground wires. Look at it, it doesn't look bad now that the wiring's all out of the way, fits in here. Just a little bit of exhaust to do here and a radiator and put the battery back in, wire up some power wires. So the moral of the story here is you just come out here and tinker for a little tiny bit every couple of days, it just keeps progressing. So if you personally have a project in your garage right now and you're watching YouTube, my stupid ass hair and stuff, just put down the laptop, Go out there, say, I'm gonna put 30 minutes into this. Just go out there and tinker with it. I guarantee you, you'll stay out there for a couple hours, the same way I do. It's getting out to the garage and starting it and like putting up with the bullshit that's the hardest part to do in a build. So for example, I was inside, smashing Red Bull into my cocksucker and I was just like, fuck man, I really want this YouTube thing to work out. I wanna get better at it, I wanna grow. So I'm not gonna grow unless I put the effort in. So. It literally took me two minutes to put on my garage clothes, come out here, start tinkering. And uh, I've been out here for like three hours now. 
and we're getting stuff done was his main thing so i'm gonna solder those things we'll put them in the fuse box and uh we'll see how it looks guys Disclaimer, I'm just your average Joe. You don't ever have to copy me. I don't know what I'm doing half the time anyways. But you can see, we put a little bit of solder on them. It should just hold them in place if those crimps do suck ass, which they probably do because I did them. Um, we'll jam this in the box now though. Like these are all the wires that need to be powered. It looks so neat now. Except for this needs to be loomed in tape. This needs to be loomed in tape. And then there's a couple wires here, like one of these is for the data port. And then another couple of them, I don't know what they go to. And then, yeah. The good thing about not using all the pins in this thing, I do have to get some inserts to make this uh, weather proof again. But um, there is five volt references in this thing. And I'm pretty sure in HP tuners that I can um, just wire my wideband straight up to one of the five volt references in the ECU and just program it out and then I can actually data log like air fuel ratios and stuff too. It's kind of neat. We'll use the outsides here as our um, power out. This one will work. And it's mainly because I'm jamming three wires into it. It's not working right. There we go. Perfect, look, boop. And then you can see that our spade terminals will fit. Then you can see that our spade terminals are gonna fit in here. So obviously when we take our power from the relay into the other side of the spade, it'll be turned on when the relay gets turned on and then it'll power up the fuses. So we have one more open spot here for a fuse um, not sure what we're going to use it for. And then we do have this box that we could probably utilize also for a bunch of this stuff. But that's where I'm going to stop today, guys. Um, we did get the ECU mounted. We got a lot of this wiring started. I need to order some one inch loom for like the bigger sections. Um, I might get away with, yeah, some one inch loom. Um, this three quarter stuff wasn't really big enough for a lot of the things. Uh, I still have to put some loom on those. We'll have to wire up some grounds, but I mean like, ooh, I just realized something. I'm missing an alternator plug. Ooh, that was probably what this thing was. Right here. It's a one wire alternator plug. Yep. So that needs to be wired in. Okay, anyways. I'm glad you guys stopped by. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. We don't get any thumbs ups anymore. Um, and, and see you guys later. This is the build. I'll be back here. I have to work my three night shifts now. So I'm actually out here like while I should be sleeping. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Love you guys. Peace easy. Get the vagina.